righty, we can go ahead and get started now. So hello, everyone, and welcome to the opening reception of Amy Hughes' solo exhibition, Intermission, here at the International Art Museum of America. We are so happy to be having Amy join us live from New York to talk about her work. Before I start off and hand over the floor kind of to Amy over here, because I'm sure you want to hear more from her than from me, um, I will go through a brief outline, kind of the events for this next hour and etc. So we're going to start off with a quick meet and greet where I can ask Amy questions about herself and her work leading up to this exhibition, Intermission. Then Amy will share a bit more about the exhibition itself. And so followed by that, we're going to do a kind of quick view of the pieces that we have available um, in the room right here. Unfortunately, my Wi-Fi did not permit us being able to go up to the gallery itself. But you know what? We got to do what we got to do. So you can see them right here in this room. And then finally, we will do a Q&A with Amy and audience members or anybody listening in on Facebook can comment or ask the artists any questions. So feel free to chat or comment any questions you have on whatever platform you are tuning in from, and we can do our best to answer any and all questions. So without further ado, I will hand things over a little bit to Amy and she can share a bit more about herself and her works. Go ahead, Amy. Perfect. Thank you so much. And thanks for having me. I'm sorry I can't be there, but I'm happy to attend virtually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so as you mentioned earlier, um, so I'm actually from the UK, but I moved here in, to New York in 2014 uh, to study my master's at the New York Academy of Art. And um, after graduating in 2016, I've basically been living here since more or less. And um, now I work at the Academy and also um, maintain an active studio practice from my studio here in Brooklyn. So that's kind of a very brief overview of how I came to be here in New York. Um, and I can speak a little bit about kind of my practice if that works, Tessa. Absolutely, I would love to hear more about it. Good, so um, I'm a painter who typically works in oils and um, Typically, I make work that kind of deals with the human body, specifically the female body. That's kind of been a recurring theme throughout a lot of the different uh, series that I've worked on. Um, and I just find, you know, the oil really lends itself well to depicting flesh and skin. You can really use it in ways that allow you to kind of, you know, capture the translucency and also the sort of thickness. So it's a really great medium for that. And I tend to work in a certain amount of realism. So I was trained in traditional oil painting skills and also took classes in anatomy and a lot of life drawing and things like that. So I'd really, um, you know, kind of honed my practice in terms of working from the human body and really having an understanding of the human body. And so that's kind of been, you know, one of the themes that's kind of run through all the different series is that it typically is figurative in some way. Um, so yeah, so in terms of how, you know, the work kind of transitioned into this current series that's here in the show Intermission, um, it really was kind of a departure from a lot of the previous work that I've made. So if anyone, you know, visits my website, amybhughes.com, they'll kind of see a lot of different works, um, very chromatic. A lot, again, as I said, a lot of work um, dealing with the female body and the representation of that in art history and also contemporary visual culture and kind of, you know, challenging that also just kind of exploring the ways in which it's been depicted. And um, so with this new kind of project that I was working on, I was really thinking about obviously we've all just been through a really crazy time during COVID and everything like that. And how for so much of that time we were kind of isolated and weren't really seeing one another. And um, during the kind of lockdown, I actually returned to, to England for a while and was kind of isolated during that time. And, you know, especially in the UK, we had a lot of lockdowns several times um, during 2020 and 2021. So for a lot of months, I was kind of just at home, didn't really see a lot of people. And 
as I kind of came out the other side of that, I was just really thinking about how much has changed in terms of human connection and how much more maybe I value that having had that, you know, kind of stripped away for such a long period of time. Um, and I just kind of felt that this was a perfect opportunity to kind of explore the concept of human connection. Um, and so one of the ways in which I thought about doing that was rather than taking my own photo pictures, uh, my own photography as references for the paintings, I decided to uh, work from vintage photography. So I was looking through old photographs of pictures from, you know, parties and scenes like that, and just seeing how I could basically depict that, but in a way where it wasn't obvious that they were old references. Um, that was kind of important to me that it still felt timely, but it also wasn't of a specific time. Um, and so the way in which I also wanted to kind of nod to the photograph was I decided that this series was going to be monochromatic, which was, you know, quite a departure from the previous works. As I said, everything was very chromatic, um, exploring all the different hues within skin tones and, and various things like that. And um, it was kind of interesting because Normally, um, my typical practice, the first stage of a painting, I do actually do like a, a monochromatic underpainting, that's quite common. But then on top of that, I'd be, you know, glazing colors, working um, sort of in thick impasto paint. For this series, I was like, okay, this is going to be stopping at this stage. So everything that I do here, I have to think about the fact that this is it. There is no uh, no reworking of it. You kind of get one shot, which is kind of an interesting challenge. Um, and every brushstroke that you leave behind will stay. So it's not something that you can kind of keep manipulating. So it was actually kind of a lot of fun. It felt very familiar in a sense, because again, that's how, how I always started my paintings. But also a real challenge knowing that that was kind of it. It was permanent and there was no reworking it. Um, so that was that was a lot of fun um, and also just really cool to see how, you know, with oils being transparent, you can really get such a huge sense of light and tonality just from one pigment alone, just with the way that you kind of wipe away the lights and, and develop the dark areas. Um, so that was that was a lot of fun. Um, so as I said, yeah, I was kind of referencing old photography and um, it was really important to me that each piece, um, as I said, did not feel like it was of that time. It could really be of any time. And so I was really choosing compositions that were kind of dynamic. There's not really a whole lot of detail. Again, that's kind of unusual for me. They're quite abstracted. Um, but the clothing is, you know, kind of more formal attire, but you couldn't necessarily assume that that's of a certain time, as I said. So that's a kind of an overview of the new, new um, direction, I suppose. Oh, I think you're muted, Tessa. <laughs> of course I am. <laughs> I'm just going to say perfect. Thank you so much for sharing about the exhibition itself. Would you mind if I asked you a couple questions about yourself? Yeah, please do. Okay, perfect. Will you tell me a little bit about how you've developed your art career so far? I know you said you lived in the UK and you moved here in the state of New York. So if you could elaborate a little bit on that. Yeah, absolutely. So I um, originally, I never intended to be an artist. That wasn't necessarily the goal. Many years ago, I originally was actually planning to do architecture because I wanted to combine the fact that I kind of liked art and design with something else that seems like a very sensible uh, <laughs> progression or a very sensible, you know, kind of job to go into. Um, but I ended up following my passion, which was art. And so I studied uh, fine art at Liverpool Hope University in England in the rainy Northwest. <laughs> and um, that was great. I loved my time there, but I also still felt that there was more to be done. And so I was exhibiting and showing my work in England, but I really wanted to push it. I wanted to have a more rigorous kind of curriculum and also be exposed to, you know, probably the most important, one of the most important art scenes in the world, New York. So I was really drawn to the New York Academy of Art for my MFA. And um, they are, again, like traditional skills, but to make contemporary work, kind of very um, 
unique in that sense, you know, not an atelier, but also not super conceptual and kind of right down the middle. So that seemed like a good fit for me. Um, and so, yeah, I applied, got in. And since then, you know, have been exhibiting in New York, having made my connections there and also teaching. And so that was also a development, you know, in terms of like realizing that I have a lot of skills that I've acquired from going through this program and being able to give back to students too. And so I supplement my um, kind of studio practice career with teaching and, and working at the academy. So that's kind of how that all came to be. <laughs> well, congratulations on your new position. That's Thank amazing. you. <laughs> and then going back to your alma mater. That's very yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, what would you say your background is for art? What would you say is your typical style? Yeah. So as I mentioned earlier, I think I'm, I've always kind of been drawn to figurative works and that was always something I knew that I wanted to pursue. And um, a lot of artists that I was really drawn to as well were figurative artists. And um, so early on, that was something I was kind of um, exploring. It wasn't necessarily something that was typically, I don't want to say in fashion, but you know, it wasn't really trending in the art world at the time when I was studying my undergraduate, but I just knew that was what I wanted to do and I kind of pushed through. And then once I went to the academy, I kind of really developed the realism that I was striving to achieve. Um, and so, yeah, so I think I straddle kind of figurative work and realism in terms of kind of genres, if you want to call it that. So that's where I'm at. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thank you for elaborating a little more on that. Um, third question I have is what or who inspires you? I know you did talk a little bit more about uh, the female body earlier and how that inspired your earlier work. Is there anything else that you have that really motivates you? Yeah, I mean, in terms of artists, you know, I think the very first artist that really blew me away was a British artist, Jenny Savile, who um, makes these really, really large paintings of the body some of them are kind of dealing with the grotesque but I was just really drawn to how she like uses oil paint in such a fleshy and tangible way and so very early on I was like wow I, this is what I want to do so she was like a has always been really important in terms of the actual work that I make and then recently for this new series I was looking at Mark Tanzi who is an artist who um is monochromatic you know his all of his paintings are kind of like an underpainting and so I thought that was really interesting you don't really see that very often and so I was really studying his work recently um and then in terms of like theme and subject matter I think it's a little bit personal depending on what I'm going through but also I think in terms of what's happening maybe politically or socially and so I just am absorbing and taking in from everything that's happening around me all the time, I think, yeah. Awesome, I really do feel like I can feel that in the works in the kind of like party kind of scenes. So that's yeah. very interesting. Yeah. Um, next question, what is your favorite project you have ever worked on? Yeah, so I think, you know, I, even though I think typically I do tend to make work about the female body, even though you know, ironically, this project right now is not. I think my favorite project, however, was actually a series I made um, in 2016, which was about the kind of death of my grandfather. And it wasn't um, super, I, I tried to be really careful to not make it too sentimental because, you know, then nobody else can like really respond to it or, or feel something from it necessarily. So I kind of made the work about loss and that was a really moving project just to have have people kind of react to it the way that you hope. I think that's always something you hope will happen, but you're never sure if it will. And so I did a portrait of him and also um, a few objects associated with him. So kind of, you know, could be very specific to him, but I think I really tried to explore how to um, push the composition so that it wasn't only about him and it was really re rewarding to see how many people kind of received that and picked up on the the underlying I guess theme of the work um, and so I think that will always be like a favorite just because it was personal but it seemed to go beyond just being personal yeah 
I do remember seeing that piece on your website and it is beautiful. And I'm glad that you shared that personal story. And last question, kind of, I guess, tying into intermission, this exhibition and a departure from your previous work. Um, What would you say kind of drove that change in your style over time or like kind of how has that style changed? And do you predict any changes in the future? Um, oh, that is such a good question. I have been thinking about the next project a lot recently, and um, I have some ideas. And I think maybe what has happened recently is having made a lot of works that were always, um, you know, they were different in terms of theme, but they were always like, you know, again, as I said, really thinking about flesh and skin and, mm-hmm. you know, very chromatic. And so it was a nice thing to be able to say, you know what, that doesn't always have to be the case. Like, what if I challenge myself to make monochromatic work? Or what if I challenge myself to push beyond the constraints of like the canvas frame itself? And so for the next project, I'm thinking about um, not being confined to like the square or the rectangle of the Mm -hmm. canvas, but actually starting to work on maybe like swatches of canvas and irregular shapes and maybe creating paintings that are part of an actual installation so Mm -hmm. I've been thinking about that that's still in the early development it's just um I guess like yeah with everything that's constantly happening and being you know overloaded by information or a lot of you know crazy moments in history that we're all living it's just really making me want to try something different and push beyond what I was doing because it just Mm -hmm. feels like everything around me is changing so much that I want to change my practice to reflect that a little bit. Mm -hmm. My gosh, yes. Adapting to change is something that we've definitely had to go through. I feel like this past year. Yeah. And that you're constantly doing it as well with through your work. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Is there anything else you wanted to add about intermission before we kind of go piece by piece into the exhibition? Yeah, no, I think I kind of covered most Mm. of what I wanted to say about the general overarching theme. So happy to go into the specific pieces. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. One second while I turn around my camera. No problem. Okay. I think I have this first piece here in frame, if you can see it. Yeah. Just fine. Okay. This one, I believe, is called Helium, if you'd like to elaborate more. Yeah, so um, if anyone sees like a picture or sees it in person, they'll kind of see there's a lot of kind of irregular um, lines throughout the piece. And this specific uh, reference image that I found was kind of interesting to me because it was a bunch of children at a party with a bunch of balloons. But I really wanted to see if I could really abstract that a lot and... um, basically all of these lines are just so chaotic and kind of cut through the image so much that I was like, that's really interesting. It kind of reflects what I'm trying to depict, which is this kind of like chaotic energy, again, in contrast to how things have been over these past few years. Um, So yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking about with that one. Awesome. I feel like you can really pick up on that in the picture. Yes. And please come see it in person. If you're watching this on recording, you can really see it better and better lighting in our light space gallery. Okay. We're going to move on to the next one. I'm writing. This one is transient. Mm -hmm. so this one um I guess part of what I was thinking about you know beyond just the photograph is also how I could kind of abstract the pieces to make them also seem like memory and so the way that often our memories of events are kind of blurred or fragmented in a way so this one I really I knew one of the pieces in the um series I wanted to be really kind of blurred and probably like in some ways the most abstracted. So I just wanted there to be like suggestions of figures. And in this specific image, there was like, I think there were like lanterns or something like hanging off strings, but I just really wanted it to be like, you know, kind of like simplified shapes with like the suggestion of figures. Um, Again, kind of alluding to like the way that your memory is sometimes 
um, a bit foggy of a certain event. Amazing. All righty, we're going to move on to the next one. All righty, this is Whirl. Yeah, so this was the first one that I actually made in this series. Um, and I was probably thinking about how to kind of abstract the figure at that time. Um, and so I was really thinking about, um, you know, how, where and when they should kind of simplify the form. So, you know, every time you kind of simplify the figure, you kind of break the, the shape a little bit. And so I was really thinking about just kind of capturing the, the sense of like a dance and movement, but simplifying some of those shapes. And I also really liked how the lighting kind of remind me almost of like a stage or theater lighting that kind of like um, mm -hmm. stark contrast and almost like a spotlight right in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I was drawn to it for that reason amazing that this is the first one made and it's the basis of your exhibition yeah That's something i did not know <laughs> all righty moving on to the next one this is flutter yeah so this one i think if you look carefully you can probably tell that some of the attire is kind of more traditional but again as i said it's kind of more formal so it, it, it's harder to say for sure um but this one i really just was drawn to it for the kind of dynamic shapes um in terms of the composition so i really liked how there was like a lot of kind of like you know the, the shape of the arms and the kind of angles throughout the piece um and again i was thinking about making sure that i'm not creating images that are static they kind of show a lot of like interaction and movement throughout so yeah that was that one <laughs> Awesome. Alrighty, next is my personal favorite. Not that it matters, but <laughs> it's my favorite. Alrighty. This is birthday cake. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this one was, you know, an image of children at a birthday mm -hmm. party with their little birthday hats on. Yeah. <laughs> and um again obviously birthday cake in front of them and i just really loved um just the you know the composition honestly i i loved i i really wanted to make sure that i kind of simplified the face so that it wasn't about these specific individuals it's not about you know the characters in this image but really it's just about the general theme of a birthday and that could really be anyone's and i think anyone can kind of feel nostalgic towards that if you're an adult or kind mm -hmm. of feel a connection to that if you are a child um and yeah it just felt like very nostalgic in some sort of way mm -hmm. and uh yeah that's that <laughs> absolutely this was one inspiring birthday party yep. <laughs> okay and the last one which unfortunately for everyone is has already been sold mm -hmm. in the gallery, but it is cabaret. Yeah, so I think for this one, um, you know, it's probably the most developed one of the series in terms of like the most kind of um, articulated shapes and forms. Um, but as I said, with the birthday cake, it's the same kind of idea of the sort of simplification of the faces. There's no specific person, but it's just the idea of people gathering. And um, yeah, I just loved the way that you could kind of see that people are conversing or, you know, there's a lot of figures in the composition, but again, you don't really know who they are, what they're doing, but they're clearly at some sort of bar or cabaret. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I just loved the little like highlights of the glasses on the table and the little whites of the shirts and the, and the cuffs. Um, so yeah, I just really loved this kind of like, sort of like almost like a memory or like an old scene from a movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I that. definitely feel that. I feel with the dress as well, it's definitely more elaborate. Yes, for sure. 
All right. Now that we've gone piece by piece, all six of them, we are on the Q&A portion of the event. So if anybody that is watching on Facebook has any comments, any questions, we can answer those. Um, I'll wait a couple seconds. All right, we don't have any questions coming in. Unfortunate. Okay. All right, well, if anybody has any questions, they want to reach out to us on social media, I will be posting this video and making uh, Facebook and Instagram content for it. So please visit the International Art Museum of America at our website which would be iamasf.org. And that should be the end of our event. Thank you, Amy, so much for being here <laughs> and going through and explaining all of this to us. It definitely gave me more of an insight into the exhibition and your pieces. And I can Thank feel you. them all now. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm looking forward to coming in person later on during the exhibition. So mm -hmm. look forward to of that. Of course. Yeah. At the end, if anybody wants to try and catch her here, yes. October 30th is the last day that the exhibition will be open. National Art Museum of America, located at 1025 Market Street, sits at the heart of downtown San Francisco between 6th and 7th Streets. The aim of our nonprofit museum is to display artworks of disparate cultures to promote peace and harmony among peoples. Visitors will enter a garden with full rock formations, tropical flowers, live ferns, and a waterfall flowing into ponds. The gallery houses ink and wash Chinese paintings, abstract oil paintings, hyper-realistic ink paintings of animals, landscapes, and figures. Approximately 60% of the displays are paintings and sculptures by the contemporary artist H. H. Dorje Chengdu III. The gallery also contains European oil paintings of landscape and portraits from 18th century, including works by the French realist Rosa Bonheur, the Norwegian Impressionist Fritz Thalo, and the French fauvist Maurice de Blamini. Yamaha offers a peaceful environment for visitors to enjoy beautiful art. Here in the gift shop, we have a little something for everyone. Whether you're a tourist or a local, or shopping for yourself or for others, especially for children. We have many products based on Yamaha's artwork, as well as international and San Francisco themed items. We do our best to have a consistent flow of new and exciting products so our visitors can always find something special to take home every time they visit Yama.